So, um, this is our first attempt at trying to um, use uh, polynomial approximations to uh, this data set that we have here, which is the x i y i values. We have n plus 1 data points, as you can see, because of the 0. So, these are n plus 1 data points. Okay, and this hopefully will help us to produce a polynomial n uh, of nth degree. Okay, and it will be um, a polynomial such that, of course, uh, Pn of xi would be equal to the yi's. So remember, this is your input and this is your output. So our polynomial should be such that when we, uh, when we take these values xi and put them in, we should get the corresponding uh, y value. Okay, so to start with, um, the van der Mond approach is, is a very simple one. Um, the matrix will appear in a, in a few minutes, as you will see. But the idea starts very basic, in fact, and is the most obvious way to um, construct a um, uh, polynomial interpolation or polynomial representation of data. So this is an nth order polynomial. Now, if uh, and, and our approach is this nth order polynomial, if we want data to fit to it, all we have to do is do the following. We'll say, well, okay, if this is our polynomial, then Pn of x0, okay, which is which should be equal to y0, because those are our data points. Uh, remember, in case you don't understand what this means, what this is is a table of values. So here, this is your xi and your yi. So x0 corresponding value y0, x1 y1, and x2 y2, and so on as it goes on up to xn, uh, uh, yn, for instance, okay? So xn, yn. So basically what you're doing is you're taking, if I take this x0 here, this x0, then pn of x0 should be equal to the output, which is y0. Now that gives me an idea, which is if I actually substitute the x0 into my polynomial, then I should get a1 x0 plus a2 x0 squared plus so on a n x0 to the power n. Now that should of course equal y0. Okay, if we do the same for the other point, so as you can see at x1, y1, so we get this uh, polynomial here, okay, and it's equal to y1. Now in the same way we can continue on x2, x3 up to xn. And what happens at xn is we have xn here that means it should be yn, which means we end up with, so we end up with this, uh, uh, the nth equation. So we've got these n equations, and we've got, now keep in mind, what are the unknowns here? Remember, x0, x1, xn, all of these uh, are in fact values that we have. These are data points that we have, in fact, okay? What are unknowns here are in fact these coefficients, the a0, a1, so the ai's, are the ones that we want to find. Now, you'll start seeing where the matrix is because if you've studied linear algebra, then you will see that this, uh, uh, this here, of course, can be represented in matrix form. And let me do that now. First row, so here you see the, co uh, the A0, its coefficient is one. A1, its coefficient is x0. A2's coefficient is x0 squared. A3 and so on up to 0 to the power n, okay? And then we have uh, this, uh, of course, is then going to be multiplied by a0, a1, all the way down to a n, and that should equal the right-hand side, which is y0, y1, up to y n. And let me fill up the rest of the matrix. So the second line will just be 1 again here, and then x1, and x1 squared, and x1n, and this will come down as 1, this will come down as xn, all the way down xn squared, till xn to the power n. So we end up with this matrix representation, and of course the augmented matrix of this, this implies augmented matrix here, and clearly we, uh, you know how to solve this, you have various approaches, um, Gaussian elimination for instance, would be one approach 
learning method to solve the system of equations and the resulting values of um, the AIs then will give you your polynomial. So let's look at a quick uh, example. So here we have three data points. So three data points means our n is going to be two. So we're looking at approximating this by a, a second order polynomial which will be a1 plus a1x plus a2x squared. So it's a quadratic. Now, the way the, the method we showed earlier, the way that works, is you would substitute, for instance, the first value, 0, 1, into this, which would mean that uh, uh, what we're trying to say then is that P2 of 0 should be 1, which implies that a, uh, substitute instead of x, put in 0. And as you put it in uh, here, both these, this will become 0, and this will also become 0, which will leave you with just a0, and that should be equal to 1. And similarly, p2 of 1 should be equal to 0, which means we have a0 plus uh, x is 1 now, a1 plus a2, and that's supposed to be equal to 0. And the last one, p2 of uh, 2 thirds, should equal a half, which means we'll have a0 plus 2 thirds a1 plus 2 thirds, uh, 4 ninths, sorry, a2 equals a half. And that will give us the matrix here, 1, 0, 0, and the right side is 1. Then we have 1, 1, 1, and 0. And we have the final so uh, one will be 1, 2 thirds, 4 ninths, and a half. Now, you have various options to solve this uh, system of equations. You can use Gaussian elimination to, on the matrix, or you could just take the A0, substitute it here and here, and get a two by two system of equations. And of course, um, it's quite uh, easy to solve. Um, when we solve the, uh, so when we solve it, we end up with A0 equals, in fact, um, so as we solve this, we end up with A0 we already have is 1, A1 is a minus a quarter, and A2 is minus 3 fourths. So therefore, it means that our um, polynomial, okay, our polynomial approximation to this data is minus 3 fourths x squared minus a quarter x plus 1. And now, of course, you can test, um, uh, you can test this polynomial because it, has to has to in fact have work for all these three data points they should be exactly obtainable from this so if you give for instance it means this just to test it sorry um, uh, let's just test this quickly so you can see that p2 of um, when I put 0 in here I get 1 when I put uh, for instance 1 in here you can see I get minus 3 uh, minus 3 fourths minus a quarter is minus 1 plus 1 is 0 and and, and similarly uh, p2 of 2 thirds if I do that when you substitute that in here 4 ninths uh, so you'll have minus and you get minus 1 sixth plus 1 and that turns out to be equal to that indeed is equal to a half so it works out so therefore this is what we've done as you can see we've got a this second order uh, polynomial here that represents in fact these data points um, uh, actually precisely so now what you can use this is you can use this to calculate for instance values inside the range of values so what we've done here is we've, for instance, looked at this. This is interpolating between 0 and 1. Uh, these, uh, this, uh, these data points range from 0 to 1. So um, the, the polynomial, in fact, uh, is interpolating values between 0 and 1. So you could use a half, for instance, and it should be able to give you a reasonable approximation. Okay, so now uh, that's uh, more than enough about the Vandermond uh, matrix. It's uh, this matrix, in fact. Uh, this matrix here is what's called the Vandermond matrix. Um, uh, or if I go back very quickly, uh, it's this matrix here, uh, this matrix. This is called the Vandermond matrix, where the name comes from. Now, um, very quickly, um, that's basically all we want to say about the Vandermond matrix. But I'll tell you one thing, uh, because you know, why are we looking? Why are we going to be looking at these other methods? Very simply as follows. Vandermond matrix has some problems. You see, if you see this is, um, 
In the example we've looked at is a very simple three data point example. In reality, one might be interested in n data points, which could be, the n could be large, could be in hundreds or thousands. Now, if you think about it, the matrix uh, you are expect to get here is a very full matrix. Now, this full matrix can have, and most likely will have, uh, a large condition number. And if it's a large condition number, then approximating it um, is cumbersome and expensive. And uh, and, it, and it's very sensitive to perturbations uh, in the data, which means any kind of uh, any kind of uh, errors can generate into, in fact, divergence or unstable uh, results. It means the um, any kind of um, the approximations can't be trusted essentially. So this is not only expensive, but also is um, because of a large possible condition number would be. Now we'll study condition numbers later, of course. Uh, um, you know, but because when we look at matrix uh, systems in other videos. But anyway, that's just to warn you that there are problems in the Vandermond matrix, but it's not the best. Uh, way to in, in fact interpolate data. It's okay if there are a few data points, but it is not um, in fact efficient when it comes to a large number of uh, data points that we wish to interpolate. Thank you. We'll start.